Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at examples of looking at surveys and interpreting surveys via Venn diagrams. This is a continuation of a previous video, so if you need the introduction, please watch the introduction to surveys video before we look at these. Okay, let's jump right to it. With our third example, because there were previous examples, here's the information we have. So this is all the information. Use that information to create a Venn diagram and then answer the questions beneath that line. Um, pause the video, see how you do here, and then you can check back with me. How'd you do? Great. Sounds promising. Okay, so um, what are we dealing with here? We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so we need three sets. So we're going to set up set one, set two, set three. We should give our sets names. Remember, we name our sets with single capital letters. I'm going to be really creative here, and I'm going to use F for Facebook, and T for Twitter, and I for Instagram. If you don't use those letters, you probably need to define what your variables are. So if you use A, B, and C, you need to say which one is set A, which one is set B, and which one is set C, because it's not immediately obvious which one is which. And then this is our universe. So we have our various regions, and we want to fill in each region based on the information we're given. I always like to start from the bottom. I suggest starting with the triple overlap when that's given to us, which it is. Um, so normally when we have the information, I like to go from the bottom to the top rather than from the top to the bottom because I can't really use the 44 students who have Facebook accounts without plugging everything else in first. So starting down here, 11 students had all three accounts. So that's going to go in the triple overlap. So now there's 11 students in the Facebook set, the Twitter set, and the Instagram set, right? That's why we put it in the triple overlap. And then if we look at the next three, so these next three, 20 students had Twitter and Instagram. So these, these are talking about students who had two of the accounts without information about the third account. When it doesn't specify that they only had Twitter or Instagram, or Twitter and Instagram, and we don't know any information about Facebook, that means that this is all the students who had Twitter and Instagram. So these 20 students, where's Twitter and Instagram, are in this eyeball shaped region right here, right? Because this is the overlapping region where Twitter and Instagram are. And we have already accounted for 11 of these students. So 11 of these students, of these 20 students already are accounted for because they also had Facebook accounts, right? It doesn't say that they had Twitter and Instagram, but not Facebook. So we just assume, well, that they, they may or may not have Facebook it doesn't tell us that. So we already have 11 of them. So the rest of the eyeball region is going to be 20 minus 11, which is nine. That's this. The 19 students had Facebook and Instagram accounts. Again, same thing. So we've already counted 11 of these guys. And here's my eyeball region for here for the overlap of Facebook and Instagram. It's this eyeball here. And we already have 11 of them. So to fill in the rest of the eyeball, it would be 19 minus 11, which is eight. So we would put eight in that region. And then same thing with the Facebook and Twitter. So up here, we have our eyeball shaped region, our overlapping region, and we already have 11 students counted for of the 27. So this would be 27 minus 11, which is 16. So we're gonna put 16 up here. So we have to be really careful. I, I mentioned in the last video that language matters. And this is when it matters because sometimes you have to subtract out the triple overlap and sometimes you don't. In this case, we did have to. Now, the top three, these are the cardinal numbers of each set. So that means that in the face, well, I, I'm going from the bottom. So in the Instagram set down here, this whole thing should add up to 44. So for Instagram, or for, I'm sorry, 43. I don't know where I got 44 from, 43. So 43 is the cardinal number of the entire set where we already have eight students accounted for, 11 students accounted for, and nine students accounted for. And we're just missing the ones who only have Instagram accounts. So this would be 28, so 43 equals 28 plus I, which means there are 15 students who only have Instagram accounts. 15 equals I. So we would put in 15 here, right? So now the entire set, Instagram set, should add up to 43. Okay, then we know 38 had Twitter accounts. So again, we already have some students accounted for because we have three regions of the four regions in Twitter already taken care of. So where can I write this? I'm gonna go up here and say Twitter is 38, and that is the four regions that include 16 plus 11 plus nine plus our unknown. So this is 20, 36, 
So 38 is 36 plus, oh, I'm writing 38, 36 plus two. So we know that two students and only two students have only Twitter accounts. So basically, if you have a Twitter account, you must have some other social media account based on my made up survey, of course. Okay, and then the top one, 44 students had Facebook accounts. That's this whole region. So Facebook users, that's 44 total, which would be the result of 16 plus 11 plus eight, plus those who only have Facebook. Well, that's 27, 35. So 44 equals 35 plus F, and that would be nine. It would take nine more. So we would put a nine in there. And that would be all of the information we were given except there's one more piece of information we were given. It's all the way at the top. There were 80 students. So the cardinal number of the universe is 80. And why do we care about that? Well, because there's one more region that we haven't filled in yet. While all the regions are filled in within the sets, what about the students who don't have any social media? We also wanna fill that in, and I think that's a question below anyway, so we might as well just go ahead and answer it now. Okay, so for our universe, we know that 80 needs to add up to all of these regions need to add up to 80. So that's nine plus 16 plus two plus eight plus 11 plus nine. Uh oh, let me do this plus 15 and then plus those with none. So we'll say N for none. So this would be 25 plus here's 10. So that's 35, 45, 55, 65, 70. So we have 70 plus N is equal to 80. And that would get, mean 10 students don't have any of these three accounts. Okay, so now we can answer these four questions at the bottom. How many students have exactly one social media account? How many have exactly one? Where's the exactly ones in this set? That would be the 15 here, the two here, and the nine here. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. Hopefully you don't need it anymore. Maybe I'm gonna erase it. There we go. So it would be nine, plus two, plus 15, which adds up to 26. So there's 26 of these students who have exactly two, uh, sorry, who have exactly one social media account. Then B says, how many students have exactly two social media accounts? So exactly two, that's the ones where it's the Facebook and Twitter without the Instagram, the Twitter and Instagram without the Facebook. So that's gonna be these here, the 16 plus the nine plus the eight. So that's 17 plus 16, which is 33. So 33 students have exactly two social media accounts. Then letter C says, how many students have at least two social media accounts? So how is this one different than B? Well, at least two is two or all three. So this is two or all three. So it includes those 33 who had exactly two, but now we need to add in the ones who had all three which there were 11. So that would be 33 plus 11. There would be 44 who have at least two. 44 who have at least two. Then letter D, how many students do not have any social media, any of these social media accounts? We figured that out. Remember that was this, this number up here. That would be 10. So this was one example of setting up a Venn diagram and then answering questions based on it. We're gonna do one more example. Here's question four and on this page, all you see is the information about the Venn diagram. So I suggest pausing the video and setting up your Venn diagram. And on the next page, there's also a few questions to answer. I just, it was kind of small, so I wanted to get the information as big as possible. And then on the next page, you'll see everything's a little bit smaller. So go ahead, pause the video, set up your Venn diagram. Now that you have your Venn diagram set up, here's the questions for you to answer. So pause the video again, try to answer these questions and see how you do. Okay, so we have 50 preschool aged children were asked about whether they had seen certain movies and the results are as follows. I see three different sets here, Frozen, Big Hero 6, and The Secret Life of Pets. So I need three, Venn uh, three circles in my Venn diagram to represent the sets. I'm gonna call this one F for Frozen, this one B for Big Hero 6, and this one P for Secret Life of Pets. I'm gonna set up my universe. And what I know about the universe is I know that the card cardinal number is 50. So I know this is 50. I also know the cardinal number of each set. I know Frozen's cardinal number, number is 28. 
Big Hero 6 is 16, and The Secret Life of, of Pets is 25, which means in the four regions within any set, those numbers should add up to the cardinal numbers. When we set this up, we always want to start with the triple overlap. So three have seen all three movies. We put three in our triple overlap, so the three is part of all three sets. From here, I'm going to work straight up, just like I did in the previous example. Six had seen Big Hero 6 and Secret Life of Pets. So again, it doesn't give us information about Frozen one way or the other. So we just, we know that where the overlap is for Big Hero 6 and Secret Life of Pets, which happens to be the eyeball shaped region here, this needs to add up to six and we already have three in there, which means we're gonna put three here. That way the eyeball shaped region adds up to six. Okay, for Frozen and Secret Life of Pets, Frozen and Secret Life of Pets, that's this eyeball shaped region here. That's where the overlap for Frozen and Secret Life of Pets is. We already have three included there. So it's going to be 11 less three, and that would be eight. So we're gonna put eight there. That way the entire eyeball shaped region has a total of 11. Okay, and then nine have seen Frozen and Big Hero 6. So that's gonna be this eyeball shaped region here. We already have three included. So this is gonna be nine minus three. That will be six in that region there. That represents all of the overlapping. Now we need to see how many children saw just one movie or exactly one movie. So we have Secret Life of Pets. There's 25 children. Secret Life of Pets is right here. So all of the numbers, all of the regions need to add up to 25. So I'm going to say P25 should be 8 plus 3 plus 3 plus our unknown. This is 14, so 25 equals 14 plus something, and that would be 14 plus 11. So 11 children have only seen Secret Life of Pets. Right above it, we have Big Hero 6. 16 children have seen Big Hero 6. So Big Hero 6, we have 16 is equal to, and we have our four regions. We have 6 plus 3 plus 3 plus only Big Hero 6. That is going to be 12. So 16 is 12 plus what? That's 12 plus 4. So this region is going to be 4. And last but not least, 28 have seen Frozen. So here's my Frozen set. And for Frozen, it's going to let me write down there. Oh, it did. We have 28 is equal to 6 plus 3 plus 8 plus those who have only seen Frozen. 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 8 is 17. 17 plus what gives me 28? That would be plus 11. So now I have most of the Venn diagram filled in. There's just one piece left. I have all of the sets filled in, but I'm missing the region of students who haven't seen any of these movies or children who haven't seen any of these movies. I know that the total number of student, uh, children asked was 50. So I'm gonna come over here and just talk about the universe here. That's 50 is equal to, and there's should be eight regions, and we know seven of the eight regions. So we're gonna go ahead and start with those 11 plus six plus four plus eight, plus three, plus three, plus 11, plus those who have seen none. If we add these together, I'm gonna to look for tens here. So here's a 10 and then 11, eight and 11, that's 22, 30. So I have 10 and 30. And then I have the only two left are the two threes, which is six. So that's, oops, sorry, that's 46 plus N. So there's four of these children who have not seen any of these movies, which brings us to the questions. How many children have seen none of the movies? Great, we just answered that. Literally just finished answering that, and that was four. How many children have seen exactly two movies? So exactly two movies, that's gonna be these regions here. So this is exactly two movies, this is exactly two movies, and this is exactly two movies. So we wanna add those three values up, and that would be eight plus six plus three put it and squeeze it in down here, eight plus six plus three, which gives us 17. So 17 of these children have seen exactly two movies. Letter C, how many children have seen at least two of the movies? So at least two means two or more. In this case, that would mean two or three. We already know how many have seen two. We know that that adds up to 17. And the number who have seen all three, that's in the triple overlap here, and that number happens to also be three. So how many children have seen at least two of the movies? That would be 20, because we would include those who have seen two and those who have seen three. The last question, how many children have seen at most two movies? So at most two means two or fewer.
that would be two or one or none of the movies. Uh, most commonly what people leave out when they do this is they leave out the zero. Don't forget zero is, that is fewer than two. So we wanna make sure we include that. This requires us adding up a whole lot of work here, right? Because we have to add, well, we already actually know the two, so that's nice. We know that that's 17. And then how many have just seen one? Well, there's 11 who only saw Frozen and that's it. Four have seen just Big Hero 6 and 11 have seen just Secret Life of Pets. And we're not gonna forget the four who haven't seen any of these movies. If we add these numbers together, 11 plus 11 is 22, 4 plus 4 is 8, that adds up to 30, and then 30 plus 17 is 47. So 47 of these children have seen at most two movies. Now that was a lot of work and we're liable to make a mistake with all of that. Sometimes what we might do is we might consider the complement. So what's the opposite of seeing at most two movies? That's seeing more than two movies, which in this case, the only option is you've seen all three. Well, there's only three of these children who have seen all three movies, which means all the other children have seen at most two. So we could have also done 50 minus three to get the 47. That's called using the complement to help us. And it would have been a lot easier to have done that. Most of us like doing the straightforward, but we do wanna look for other options, right? This is all about problem solving and, and making your life easier. So sometimes considering the complement might be a better choice. These have been examples of using surveys to answer questions and set up Venn diagrams. Thank you for stopping by.